Welcome back to the 25 Days of Flows, the Power Automate Advent Calendar. Welcome to day 16. Day 16 is another flow that it will be beneficial for administrators or if you are inheriting flows from other people. So let's look at this flow. This will enable you to replace all the connections within a flow and you'll use a button to do this. So um, in this case, we're going to use a flow to update the connections in another flow to be our own. So imagine you had somebody in your team and they were super good with flow, but now they're moving on to another department or maybe they're leaving the company and you're gonna inherit their flows so that they can be maintained. In that case, you have to replace the connections with your own after he or she shares that flow with you. So let me kind of show you, let's get started with a little reminder of the connector. So today we're gonna to use the flow management connector, which is the standard connector and anybody can use it. And let's head over to flow and kind of look at the challenge. So. Very interestingly, um, when someone gives you a flow, so basically they would share it in team flows, and now you can access that. You're still, your, your connections are not there yet just because they give it to you. You are gonna be running that flow under their connections unless you make a specific decision to change the connections. Now, what somebody will sometimes do in this case is let's say this this uh, flow was given to me is they will go in open the flow and I'm going to copy this action so you can see that the person who made this flow which happens to be me but let's pretend they have done a lot of work to make this flow work it's been tested it's been analyzed and it's it's working well for our team but I'm going to copy this action and show you the challenge that occurs if you manually change connections. So I'm just going to copy that to my clipboard. I tell you, I just really love copy and paste. And I'm going to put that there. And now I've got a second one just so um, I don't mess up this one. All right. Now, if I go over here, I can add a new connection right here. Um, but watch what happens when I do that. So notice this is all filled out and it might even have some advanced options. This one doesn't, but I'm going to head and add a new connection, signing in and authenticating to the new connection. So basically if, if, if that person gave me this flow and I know they're leaving, I probably will change it to my connection or, uh, with the account that we've decided to use for, uh, flows in general, I would log in with that account and change the connections to that account. All right, so let's go ahead and authenticate here. Notice that all of the dynamic tokens are gone. Now this, this, this is a considerable problem if you have uh, advanced expressions in there, because now you've got to figure out, oh my goodness, what were those advanced expressions? And what I've seen in the past is that some people don't have the expertise of the person who was hired to build a flow in order to fill these back out again. And so here's uh, what I have for you to help with this, all right? So I'm not gonna save that flow. I didn't do anything to it. We're going to talk about updating flow connections. So I'm going to go ahead and edit this flow, which I've already built just for the sake of time. And this is a button flow. And it's just because I can press it whenever I want to use it. Right. And it starts with the flow management action and which needs to know what environment and which flow are we targeting? So when you download this flow, you're gonna to have to change the environment and the flow to your own environment and your own flow. But it's very important that you do pick a flow. Now what you could do probably is put a variable up here and just keep changing that and use that whenever there's a flow because there's two places in this flow where you have to specify environment and in flow. 
you could put those in variables and use them later, but I, I spelled it out so that it would be easy for you to understand. Just remember to replace them with your own. So this get flow action actually goes out and gets the flow definition, right? So I want to show you a, a last run on this so you can see what I mean. Oh, it hasn't run yet. Okay. So let's, uh, I'm not going to run it yet, but it goes out and it gets the flow definition. All right. And, and we'll, we're going to look at the flow definition when I run this so that you can see what I mean by flow definition. And then after it gets the flow definition, it gets the connections in the environment where that flow lives. All right. And you might be noticing that I'm using the power. I, I think I'm using the power apps, get connections. And that because, and that's because it has more paging. That's the only reason, right? The, the, there's a little bit more, um, paging capability on the power apps for app makers. But again, you can use either one. All right. Notice I have my page size at 250. All right. So now it's getting the connections in that environment. And right here, this filter quick query is not an option. You need this filter query. So the start of the query is always environment EQ. It's no data query. And then within single quotes, you want the GUID of the, um, the GUID of the environment. So let me just see if I can show you this up close. I'm going to bring my screen down so you can see my URL and I'm going to just take another window here and go into power. It doesn't matter if I go to power apps or power automate. It really doesn't matter which one I go to. Um, and then I change my environment. Okay. So let's go to CDS demonstrations. Uh, whenever you're in an environment, so let's say I go to my flows here. If, Whatever environment I'm in, up here at the top is the, right here, is the GUID that identifies this environment. Um, and so that is important for the get connections action. So just go to the environment that you're interested in, whatever environment that is, and then go to my flows, because this is where this shows up and then grab the environment GUID. Now the default starts with the word default. We did this on purpose in order to identify default environments easily. But uh, yes, you need to keep the word default because that's part of the GUID for the default environment. But you don't need what comes after this, like flows, and you don't need what's coming before it. You just need that GUID there. Okay. So then after you, and you want to make sure that you put that in single quotes. All right. So these, these two actions are like nothing else will work in this flow unless these two actions are correct, which means if you have a, if you, ha, if you select a flow that gets deleted, it ain't going to work because it's going to look for that flow. Even if you name a flow, the exact same name, it's going to have a different, um, back end good. So, just want to make sure that you check that you've got the flow is still alive. You know, you can still pick it in the drop down, and you make sure you have this filter query that includes the GUID of your environment. All right. So those two things all taken up. Um, then I'm going to create a variable, which is my connections array. So it's the array of connections. Um, and you'll see that in a few minutes. There's an apply to each here and what it's doing, and this is really important. Wish I could make this bigger for you. Let's see. No, I can't. So, um, if you hover over this dynamic tag, when you download the flow, the, the flow, what you'll notice is that this is the body of the Git flow. So it's this one. And we're actually going to look at that JSON closely together. And after it gets in the body uh, of that Git flow, it's going to look at the connection references that are in the properties. So each flow in its definition outlines what connection references are 
in the flow. All right. So we're going to iterate through those, but first we're going to filter that array where API ID in the get connections. So this one is from the get connections from the environment, but we want to check where the environment API is equal to the connector ID. And then we're going to append a small, um, bit of JSON that will give us, um, an array of connection names and connector IDs. And you can see that for the name, I actually use first, um, and that will help you not get thrown into another loop eat also. Right. And so all of these connectors, connections and connector IDs are going into array. So we're combining two words that people often confuse connection, which is what is used to connect to the connector. And then the connector, which is like SharePoint, Excel, um, dynamics or common data service. Those are the connectors. So for every connector, we have X amount of connections. And so we're making an, an array of that. And then outside of that array, we're going to update the flow definition. And what we're going to do is we're going to look for the flow with the display name that we picked above with Git flow. And then we're going to leave the flow definition exactly. So the name and the definition are basically going to stay the same with the exception of the connection references are now going to be the array that we're making and apply to each. And because this is running under my, um, this flow is running under my connections, it will use my connections to, to update the flow. So, uh, it's is a very handy tool because literally if you had a really big flow and you needed to replace all your connections, you could do it in one, uh, run of this flow and it would not damage any of your actions. They would still remain whole. Okay. Nothing would have to be redone. Okay. So now I'm just going to zoom out and I'm just going to run this so that you can see what happens. Now, in this case, it's really not doing anything much. And the reason I say that is because the original flow is running under my connections. So you might want to try this with, with someone, you know, actually test it, ask someone to send you, uh, to give to share a flow with you which means that it has their connections and ask them if they mind, if you replace it with your own, of course. So this is a test. So I wouldn't use anything in production. Just go ahead and do a test of this, have them send you a flow with their own connections and then run this flow from the 25 days of flows against that flow and watch all the connections change. It's really cool. All right. So I'm just going to do a test and say I'll perform the trigger action and it's going to run. It's going to validate my connections. And then done. All right. So I think one thing I have to say that I, that I didn't do is my PowerPoint should have probably also included the power apps admin connector. Um, just to be fair. Um, and you have to have the rights to run this wherever you're running it. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, because connections, uh, let's, let's do an edit real quick and let's just check which action, which uh, connector this is. I'm going to click learn more under the eye. Let's just see what, and it goes straight to the place where that action applies. Now this is an app maker. So if you have both power apps and flow capabilities as your, your license gives you both, then you'll be able to use this even if you're not an admin. So that's awesome. Okay. Did our flow run? Okay. Let's go check our run. Um, notice that construction photos has been edited 51 seconds ago. So during that run and it is turned off. I didn't tell you this. Um, I turned it off. So in update flow, if I go to flow state, I actually said, after you make these changes, turn it off. 
And the reason is because it's possible, um, I, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to kick off right away after this change may make, because maybe I don't want that flow to run yet. Um, but you don't have to put stops. You can put whatever you want. You can start it um, or you can stop it. In this case, I chose to stop it. And so it turns it off, um, but we can most definitely turn it back on. And you can see that it's edited. And what was edited, uh, it ran through all the connections and updated them. Again, in my case, um, these are my connections anyway, so you should try it with somebody else, like get a buddy to test this with you. Uh, let's look at the flow so you can see this flow run that succeeded. Uh, I'm gonna open up Visual Studio Code real quick. If I can, let's see. All right. And don't get nervous. You don't have to open up Visual Studio Code. You don't have to look at the code. None of that's necessary. I just want to show you, okay? So I'm going to go and pull up this get flow situation. And notice it has a flow definition and it has connection references. And it has, it has, so basically if you, if you understand that each flow has a story, this is the flow story, right? What is environment? What's its name? Um, what's its it, it, it display name? What is its definition? And this is like the DNA of a flow. Um, what state is it? Like when this, when this triggered, what state was it in? What the flow name's GUID is? What the flow created time was? You can get everything you want about this flow. This is the DNA of the flow. And then you get all the connection references in this one thing right here. Now this particular flow only had one connection, but it could have had 20 and it still would have worked. Okay. It would have given us each, each, it would have been one array with each connection highlighted within the body of this JSON. It tells you the trigger. So this was definitely a button and it was a, uh, a request type so all buttons are requests and then you get your actions it'll actually tell you what actions so this is a fun one to play with and to get to know I really enjoyed learning this kudos to Steven who is patient enough to teach me these things because I love this stuff it's kind of fun to learn so I want to just take out the flow definition for a minute and put that in Visual Studio Code and then I'm gonna put that in JSON format so you can see. Look at the DNA of your flow. You can find out everything. Like you'll spot, you know, what kind of flow it is. You'll also spot the description. And literally, we will do this before the end of the 25 days of flows. We will change the definition in one of these uh, 25 days of flows, which is really an interesting process. Um, and then you have, um, like this button has some inputs that the person can give. And so these are the prompts on the button, which are text. And you'll see these in your JSON text, text one, whether or not text and text one are required. Um, here are your actions. So really cool to kind of, and I know those of us that don't write code, really aren't excited about read about playing around with code but i trust me it is interesting and it's rather fun to kind of see what does flow look like in behind the scenes because it, all of these things are rest apis and they have patterns that if you learn them they will help you in troubleshooting they'll also help you in explaining to others what your flows um what your flows are doing for your team so this is basically the end of today. So I encourage you to tr check these out, whether you're an admin or not, check these things out because they give you a, a second layer of capability that will always be beneficial. Um, I wish you happy holidays and I'll be seeing you at the next 25 days of flows as the Power Automate Advent Calendar continues.